A, B, and C are three points on line of greatest slope. Point on line of greatest slope, okay, of a plane which is inclined at theta to the horizontal with A higher than B, B higher than C. Between A and B, the plane is smooth, and between B and C, the plane is rough. A particle, P, is released from rest on plane at A and slides, okay, slides as opposed to rolls. If a roll is, it would have to take into account um, rotational um, uh, energy. Slides down the line from A to B to C. At time point 0.8 seconds after leaving A, the particle passes through B with a speed of 4 meters per second. Find the value of theta. So I'm going to draw this as a triangle because I think that's the same thing that we're talking about here. So this will be A, this will be B, and this I'm going to call it as a box that's sliding. And so we're given the data. So this first part is smooth, zero friction. So we're given um, a time and a final speed. So this is going to be kinematic equations. If you're not familiar with them, um, these, are, these are basically three kinematic equations. So if you have a constant acceleration, right, that is A equals A, then you can take the integral of both sides and you get velocity, which is AT plus V naught. Take the integral again and you get position, which is one half AT squared plus V naught T plus X naught. This is the equation I think that we're going to use here. So we're given, we want to find the acceleration, how much um, this box is accelerating down the ramp. And this is a assuming, so we're going to assume a constant acceleration due to gravity. And we're going to say, all right, if we use this equation, this will be V final. So V final they give us is four meters per second. They give us that time is 0.8 seconds, and then it starts from rest, so V initial is zero. Rearranging that for A, we get A equals V final over uh, time, which is going to be four divided by 0.8, which will be five. Five meters per second squared will be the acceleration of the box coming down. Now we want to find out what that uh, corresponds to in terms of um, an, ex um, let's see, an, ex an angle. We want to find out what the angle that corresponds to. So we have force of gravity coming down, which is mass times gravity. Well, for a box sliding down a ramp, this will be mg sine of theta, where this is theta. And they told us that theta was... Uh, right up here, theta degrees with respect to the horizontal. So with respect to the horizontal, so that will be theta right there. So if it's the force going down will be mg sine theta, and so the acceleration will be g sine theta. So we know that acceleration equals g sine theta. We already found the acceleration by our equation over here, and so we can solve for theta, which would be the arc sine, the inverse sine, if you will, of A over G. So this will be inverse sine, arc sine, of acceleration, which was 5 over 9.8, which is, bum bum bum, on clear second arc sine, 5 divided by 9.81, that gives us 30.64. Eh, yep, that seems reasonable. 30.64 degrees. Okay, so now we know the theta. Find the value of theta. Oh, got it. Bam. Excellent. So now, second part of the question. A time t equals 4.8 seconds after leaving A. So it took 0.8 seconds to get from A to B. Yep. So what this is saying is that time B to C equals 4 seconds, basically 4.8 minus 0.8. Or it comes to rest at C. Aha. So final velocity at C will be 0. Find the coefficient of friction between P and the rough part of the plane. Okay, so we have box sliding again. So this is going to be mg sine theta, which will be the force going down. This will be 
m g no 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 that's gonna be force friction force friction and one of the things that force friction is going to rely on is the normal force will be mg cosine theta. I just memorized these. Um, it's easier if you just memorize them because you use them enough. And you can find them out using geometry based on this angle and the fact that the angle straight down is m times g. But you're better off just memorizing that the force sliding down the ramp is going to be mg sine theta. And then the normal force will be mg cosine theta theta. Find the coefficient of friction between P and the rough part of the plane. Okay, so we want to find the total acceleration first. We're going to use the same equation we did earlier. So solving for acceleration, acceleration equals uh, VF minus V initial over time T. So V final equals zero. Uh, initial velocity um, that will be how fast it was going at point B. And they gave us that earlier. I think that was 4 meters per second. 4 meters per second. Yep. So we have 0 minus 4 over 4. So this is meters per second per second. This will give us 1, negative 1, meters per second squared. Okay? So the acceleration going towards down the ramp is negative 1. So the sum of all forces going down the ramp will be force, um, I'm going to say that as mg sine theta due to gravity minus, now the force of friction, that is uh, coefficient of friction times the normal force, and the normal force will be uh, mg cosine of theta. And these two will oppose each other. So we'll have mg cosine of theta and need a coefficient of friction right there. And we know that the sum of all forces will be mass times acceleration. And we know the acceleration was going to be negative 1 because that's what we just found. So canceling here we can get rid of the masses. Convenient because we don't know what the mass is. We know theta. We know gravity. We don't know this, but we do know this. That's good. So now I'm going to rearrange everything and solve for um, coefficient of friction. So from this point, I'm going to rewrite the equation in a way that makes sense to me. So I'm going to say G sine of, ooh, can I factor that out? No, I can't. G sine theta minus G cosine of theta times mu k. And I know what acceleration is here, so I'm going to write it out negative 1. And it's meters per second squared. And the reason I want to write that out is that way I can see very clearly that this force of friction right here is, so the force of friction is causing it to slow down. So the acceleration is actually up the ramp. And that way I can see that the force of friction and the net acceleration are in the same direction. This is the way I try and keep the signs correct. So I'm going to move this over to that side, that over to that side, and we have g sine theta plus 1 equals g cosine theta mu k. Solving for mu k, which is the coefficient of friction, we have g sine of theta plus 1 over g cosine of theta. And that will give us, bump, 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 it's 30.64 is the um, theta. So we'll do 9.8 times, nope, times, there we go, sine of 30.64 plus 1 divided by quantity 9.8 times cosine 30.64. Click, click. I think that's right. And I get 0.71. 1. 0.711. And there's no units associated with coefficient of friction. It is a ratio. So I think the coefficient of friction will be 0.711. Okay, backtrack kind of what we did here. We're basically giving, uh, had a block sliding down a ramp problem. We had two of them. One had to do with uh, no friction, and the other one had 
friction, basically causing the block to slow down and eventually come to a stop. Um, I guess that would have been kinetic. So then what we did then was these two ramps were related because they had the same angle, same theta. And we had to use the first part to find the angle, and then we used that information to use the with the second part to find the coefficient of friction of the plane. Another thing we had to do was had to use the formula for um, velocity. Velocity equals acceleration times time plus whatever the initial velocity was, and we use that to solve for the acceleration in the two cases. So that is how I would approach this problem. Hope it helped. See you next time.